Oh, hi, I'm Jenna from the Lindsay Wildlife Experience. And today I'm gonna to show you a very cool way that you can learn more about the types of animals that live all around you. Now you may have heard the phrase, take only pictures, leave only footprints, which is another way of saying you should leave no trace. But what if you could take an animal's footprints home with you? That's what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna to show you how to find and cast animal tracks and even how you can tell the story of an animal by interpreting its footprints. Tracking is a great family activity and it's just a cool way to engage with your surroundings. Plus they make a pretty awesome keepsake to remind you of your experience. Here I have a selection of track casts that my family and I made on a trip to Yellowstone when I was just seven years old. This one's a little easier to see. You've got the palm down here, one, two, three, four pads of fingers, and claws at the ends. This is the track of a wolf. This one may be a little bit harder to see, but you've got a palm here, one, two, three, four, five lobes, and claws at the end, and it's a pretty large track. This is actually the track of a bear. Now that you have an idea of what you'll be making, it's time to put together your kit before you head out. At minimum, this is what your kit should include. I use plaster of Paris, but you can also use dental plaster. You'll need water to mix with your plaster powder, and a container and utensil for mixing your plaster and your water together. You'll also need hard paper strips to create a border around your track in which you'll pour your plaster. I use cut up strips of manila envelopes and paper clips to help it keep its form. I've come out here to the shoreline where there are plenty of wet, sandy, and muddy areas that are gonna be perfect for looking for animal tracks. And the spot I've come to today is popular for folks like you and I to come for recreational activities. Things like hiking, fishing, and even flying kites but it's also an area where wild animals come to get the resources they need to survive. Things like food, water, and shelter. So let's take a look. As I head towards the muddy banks of this inlet, I start to see tracks crisscrossing along the mud. It almost looks like a wildlife freeway. Here are some tracks clearly indicating that an animal was headed in a particular direction. In some areas, you may be able to interpret what the animal was doing. Here, we see a trail of tracks heading towards the water and then tracks heading back away from the water. Before I cast my track, I'm going to document it in my nature journal. I'll take measurements of the length and width and do a quick sketch for later reference. I have an idea of who made these tracks, but do you have any guesses? Now that you've found a track that you like that looks deep enough, it's time to break out your casting kit. First, you're gonna want your hard paper strips to create a border around your track. This is going to provide a dam so that your plaster does not go outside of the track. Then you're gonna take your water and your plaster in your container with a mixing tool. Now what you want generally is a two to one ratio of plaster to water. So I'm gonna eyeball how much water to put in here and then I can always add more if it's not enough. Then you're gonna start mixing and what you want is your plaster to become the consistency of pancake batter. So now that your plaster is a consistency that looks good, you're gonna go ahead and pour it gently into your track. And I'm gonna start kind of right in the middle of this footprint and go out into the toes so that I make sure all those areas are covered. And I'm gonna get both of these tracks that are right next to each other. Thank you. 
Now that we've filled the track, we're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes to a half hour so that it's hardened enough for us to pull it out of the mud. All right, our track's been sitting for about 20 minutes to a half hour. And I think based on touching the back of it, it feels pretty solid, pretty dry. So we're gonna go ahead and reveal what we've got. So you can just gently peel away your border. And I'll fold this up to take it with me. And then what you wanna do is kind of try to break the mud, the mud water seal around the edges here. This mud is uh, pretty challenging. So I'm gonna dig around the edge of it a little bit to try to break that seal so that it doesn't stick down into the ground. And then we can kind of start to rock it very gently, gentle pressure, rocking it back and forth a little bit. Now there's a lot of excess mud on this track and we want to leave some of it behind. So I'll clean off some of the mud very gently, but we'll take the track home and let it set for 24 hours until it's fully hardened. Then we'll rinse off any remaining mud so the track details are visible. We also want to leave no trace that we were here by picking up any bits of plaster we may have missed and packing it out in your container. That looks pretty good. If you didn't try to identify your tracks in the field, now is a good time to do so. I have a bit of an advantage because I've seen tracks like this before, but as I flip through my guidebook for reference, I've found a pretty good match. Just like the picture in my guidebook, my cast footprints have long slender toes with connected toe pads, a longer triangular back foot, and a shorter front foot. Based on my comparison and the location the tracks came from, I believe these are the footprints of a raccoon. So I've labeled the back of my cast here with the date and location that I took it and also with the type of animal I think it is. And now it's ready to be displayed in your home as a reminder of your adventure and of the amazing animals we live alongside. Learning about the animals we share space and resources with can help us understand how to live sustainably in our shared environment and hopefully you've had a fun and memorable experience along the way. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the Lindsay Wildlife Experience channel.